Vande ham Shri Guru Shri Tahpar Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavasa Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Rakunatan Vitam Tam Sajiva Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Taitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitaasya From Vishnu Sahasranam, we uh, gain a composite understanding of the qualities that, the qualities by which Bhagavan is known as Bhagavan, by which Vishnu specifically is known as Bhagavan. Uh, why we should worship him, or why we are worshipping him, and why everyone should worship him. Oh, what do? There's one printout. You can bring that. You know what I'm talking about? That I have here every day in the commentary. Bring it quickly. So among these names of Vishnu, some are particularly significant because they, uh, uh, they're all, of course they're all significant, but they are, they describe or then in his case, non-different from the particular traits of his being that uh, define him as being who he is, which is categorically different from others. So the name today that I'll discuss Krishna Willen, is Purusha. So there's one of those important words. And it literally means person. So you may think, well, that's not so important because obviously he's a per Just to say, if you describe someone as a person, well, you think, well, that's not much of a... Dis I mean, you already know he's a person, isn't it? <laughs> Could you say... Please tell us something about Mr. Chaudhuri. And if you just say, well, he's a person. You think, well, that, they didn't really tell us much because we already knew he's a person. But actually this uh, word is, or name is very significant in as much as there is a class of philosophers who wish to depersonalize him. Just like uh, in the 20th century and continuing in the 21st century, there's a. In the Western world, there is a uh, fear among some citizens that they will become depersonalized and just become known by just by their number. Then the number in their identification is becomes their principal identity. There was a TV series where I remember it, before I joined the movement that I used to watch called The Prisoner in which the, uh, the prisoner would ask the it's kind of funny prison. I don't want to describe it too much, but uh, it appeared that he was free because he was living in a village. But whenever he tried to go outside the village, he would be brought back. So he asked the person in charge, "What is your name?" And he would say, "I am number two, and you are number six. And then he would reply, "I am not a number. I am a free man." So the idea of depersonalization 
is horrible for us that we simply become a number or uh, just one number among others. But uh, the Mayavadis, they want to depersonalize the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, significant about... Per- we may say, well, Mr. Chaudhary, he's a person. You may say, well, I know that. Tell me some more. So person means they have uh, specific qualities that distinguish them from other persons. So if we say, say tell me more about Mr. Chaudhary, it means we want to hear about the specific characteristics of him which distinguish him from other persons. He is 29 years old. He is a resident of Chennai. So that distinguishes him from other Mr. Chaudhary's because it's a, it's a fairly common name, Chaudhary. Uh, what else? He's an engineer. What else would he be in Tamil Nadu? Uh, he uh, is a Capricorn according to Western astrology which I don't think people here in India follow but there were, anyway they'd say he's he's a Vata type as compared to a Pitta or Kapha type uh, he likes watching cricket that doesn't distinguish him very much from other Indians but Anyway, there are certain characteristics which uh, describe his personality. Person means personality. Uh, This is very important because the Mayavadis, they want to say, uh, ultimately, uh, Vishnu, even though they'll also chant his names, they want to say that ultimately he has no qualities, which makes you wonder why they bother to chant his names. They worship, as Srila Prabhupada calls it, the philosophized Vishnu. They worship Vishnu, but they, they philosophize him into practical non-existence. Now, the, uh, that he is a person doesn't seem that, well, you know, what's so great about him, because everyone's a person. But just the word before this, or the name before, was Avyayaha which means indestructible, eternal, undiminishing, which uh, sets him apart from others. He's a person, uh, but without the defects of persons in this material world. This is what the Mayavadis can't understand. They think if someone is, or, or, or if an entity is avyayaha, is uh, indestructible, then it cannot be any entity of this material world, which is correct. And they think it's so categorically, categorically different from anything of this material world that it cannot have any qualities or characteristics because everything that within our experience that has qualities and characteristics is material. Everything is subject to destruction. And therefore they conclude that Brahman is not a person because every person that we've seen is has either died or is subject to death. However, um, that here in Vishnu Sahasranam, the words Avyayaha and Purusha are juxtaposed means Exactly that. He is a person, but he's, uh, he doesn't die. He's eternal. So in other words, although he's a person, he is of a, uh, in a completely different category. In one sense, he is in the same category as all other persons, but in other sense he's not. This here, the Gorya understanding, achinta bheda bheda. This comes into play. He's atma, but he's paramatma. He's purusha, but he is not subject to death. And he, he's also not subject to birth. So he's not subject to birth either. 
So by this very name, Mayavad is refuted. And also uh, materialistic conceptions of God are also refuted. In Christianity, uh, the conception of God used to be of, as that of an old man because uh, God is perceived as the creator of the world and obviously the world was created a long time ago. So because they do not have a they do not have transcendental knowledge or information of the nature of the personality of Godhead, they think that because he is very old, he must be he must have a long beard, and in fact he's uh, portrayed in the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican Basilica in uh, Vatican City in Rome, which is the the heart of the largest and what claims to be the original Christian church. Uh, God is portrayed as an old man with a long white beard. So this is a materialistic conception of God. He, actually he is Purana Purusha. He is very old, but at the same time, Advaita Machutim Anadim Ananta Rupam Adyang Purana Purusha Navayovanamcha Videshu Durlabhama Durlabhamatma Bhakto Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Majami. He is the original person. Uh, he's an uh, old person, but he's not old in the way old persons are old in this world because he's not subject to time. Even though he's old, he remains always fresh and young. Never yovanam. Always fresh and young. So the materialistic concept of God is as that of an old man, or this conception uh, is rejected in Islam of him being a person. And so... Uh, going from one materialistic speculation about God to another, they deny his personality altogether. So both uh, considering God to be a person in a materialistic way and <coughs> rejecting that materialistic conception of him without factual knowledge of him, uh, both <coughs> conceptions are uh, at best incomplete and imperfect. So actually, as Srila Prabhupada often said, for the first time in the Western world, actual knowledge, we are introducing, we meant Srila Prabhupada, we are introducing actual knowledge of the nature of God. So therefore, it's important to discuss these qualities and characteristics of him. And uh, people who are actually sincere in understanding God, who are from other traditions, they should be able to recognize that here is first-class theology. Like Ravindra Saruprabhu, he was at university studying world religions or some other boring subject. Something like that, something to do with religious studies. And he got the Ishopanishad and... Uh, he just read the, the, the first verse that Om Purnama Daha Purnam Idam Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnama Daya Purna Eva Vashishate. Actually, it's not the first verse, it's the invocatory verse. So that the, the Supreme Lord is complete and perfect, and although this is again Avyayaha. This, this describes avyayaha. Even though so many uh, perfect and complete units emanate from him, he is not depleted in any way. He remains perfect and complete. So, uh, on reading this, uh, 
Ravindra Saruprabhu at that time understood that this is uh, first class theology. So anyone who's uh, sincere will appreciate that. And uh, actually there are various Christian pastors who uh, read Prabhupada's books and they incorporate that knowledge, knowledge into their sermons. Although they should actually just recognize that there's once you get the knowledge of Srila Prabhupada's books, there's no need to to uh, continue with that you know, antiquated theology of, of Christianity, which is uh, more or less a, a, a medieval blending of paganistic ideas with what they revived from the ancient Greeks and stuck it all together. Mm. Anyway, let's not get too much into criticizing Christianity here. So this term Purusha, we'll find it uh, repeatedly in Bhagavad Gita and in Srimad Bhagavatam. It means person, so uh, in Bhagavad Gita sometimes it means the... uh, individual soul in the material world, purusha prakriti stohi, bhunte prakriti jan gunai, karnam guna sangrosya sadhasadhyoni janmasu. This clearly from the context refers to the conditioned soul in the material world. I hope you all know the meaning of that verse. No? I suppose you don't all. So it means that the purusha, here clearly from the context means the condition so is uh, situated within material nature and uh, is enjoying the three modes which are generated from that material nature and due to association with that material nature gets uh, favorable or desirable and undesirable births. So clearly this refers to the um, conditioned soul. But then there are many instances, Uttama Purusha Tvanya, Parama Medhu, or Purushaṁ Shāśvatam Divyam, What is that? Janati purusha yoma meva samuto janati paramam purusham divyam yati patanu chintayam. So there are many instances in Bhagavad Gita where uh, it specifically refers to the supreme person. Now uh, another important meaning of the term purusha. Generally it means um, person. But another important meaning is male person as distinguished from female. And the connotation here is that uh, is of purusha, male, and prakriti, female. And here the connotation of purusha is the enjoyer and prakriti as the enjoyed. These uh, two concepts of purusha and prakriti are that on which the philosophy of Sankhya is based, which we find also reflected in Bhagavad Gita and in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is after all an uh, we could say an extension of, or an, an elaboration on the topics of Bhagavad Gita. Now, Sankhya philosophy, the atheistic Sankhya philosophy, uh, their concept of Purusha and Prakriti is, yeah, even, <laughs> even though they speak of Purusha and Prakriti, but they don't consider that there's actually a, a supreme personality of Godhead. Oh, that's, by, by the way, Paramam Purusham Divyam. That's that term in Bhagavad Gita uh, corresponds to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
So, uh, the proper understanding is of the Supreme Personality and all else that exists are His energies. There is Shakti Man, the possessor of energy, and Shakti, which means His energies. So, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the uh, source of all potencies. They're all dependent upon Him. And they are all meant for His enjoyment. And the example uh, is given, male and female, of in the sexual act, the male is the enjoyer and the female is the enjoyed. So, uh, this is the essential understanding uh, understanding of the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and of His relationship to everything else and our function as jivas in respect to Him. So this function is particularly emphasized by the Goryas. We can practically say that the whole uh, or, or the crux, the essence of the Gorya philosophy is Atendriya Priti Vansha Tare Balaikam Krishnendriya Priti Icha Dhare Premanam That Prem, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu established as the Prayojana, the ultimate need of every living being, that is distinguished from mundane lust. Mundane lust means to wish to uh, satisfy, gratify one's own senses. And prem means the desire to satisfy Krishna's senses. So uh, that is based on the understanding that Krishna is the enjoyer and all ourselves and all others are to be enjoyed. This is our constitutional position. So uh, throughout the Vedic literature that understanding is there. But it's specified in Gorya Darshan. Darshan. You use that word darshan for philosophy? Yeah. It's not exactly philosophy in the way the Western, but what can we do? We're using this English language. Just like, for instance, uh, we'll find here in Vishnu Sahasranam, there are, there are several names of Vishnu uh, in relation to yagya. Yagya Bhuk means the enjoyer of the sacrifice. Yagya Purusha. Yagya Purusha means the person who is worshipped in Yagya, and Yagya Bhuk means the enjoyer. Here, Purusha can also mean the enjoyer. So, in Vedic culture, the, the Vedic culture is centered around sacrifice. It's a very important understanding which. Uh, very important to help us understand the whole context in which uh, Shastra, we're studying Shastra, but in a context in which the concept of Yajna, even within Indian culture, the concept of Yajna has as the center of all human activities is largely lost. But that are all Dharma, Artha, and Kama, particularly these three, the uh, of the Chaturvarga or the Purusharthas, they are uh, they culminate or, or they're, they're intimately linked with Yajna. Even Kama, Kama, um, um, what is that? Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, that anyway, I'm not remembering. That. So, uh, this is a side point anyway. 
that w- w- when karma or desire, which means means f- fulfillment of desire, is stated in the Chatur Varga, that doesn't mean just grossly going off and enjoying one's senses. It means enjoying the senses according to dharma and the facilities for doing so are provided by the demigods who are satisfied by yagya. This is the understanding. So Krishna is the yagya purush and in all the Vedic literature that he is, Vishnu is the purusha, the enjoyer. The, the understanding that he is the enjoyer, this is particularly the Gorya contribution, that he's the yagya purusha, that in all yagyas, whether it's termed indra yagya or whatever, whoever the yagya is superficially offered to, the uh, first person worshipped uh, is Vishnu. So the understanding that actually the, the yagya and everything else is meant to be done for his pleasure, not simply to... Uh, what's the word? I can't remember that. To supplicate him. That's the word. Supplicate him to get some material facility. So that is, that is the understanding that takes one from uh, karma yoga or karma mishra bhakti to shuddha bhakti. That actually Krishna is, everything is meant to be done for his pleasure. Krishna arteya kela This is the... Uh, I was saying Atendriya Priti Bancha, this is the uh, the the Mool Sutra, the the essence of Gorya understanding. Even that can be condensed even more into Krishna Te Akela Cheshta. All endeavors should be for his sake. Now uh, Purusha uh, means the giver of the seed in the in the male female uh, understanding. These two are symbiotic. It means they 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 come to they come together and the sum total the, the, the what is formed is from the two is more than that of the two if they were separate. So purusha means the giver of seed. And prakriti means that in which it develops. So in Bhagavad Gita we have Nidhanam Bija Mavyayam. That Krishna is the uh, indestructible seed that I discussed yesterday. So all these terms there interlinked. We'll find also Bija is one name there. One name of Vishnu. Um, in Gorya understanding especially, maybe in others also, but Gorya certainly emphasizes that the Paramatma sp- means the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but uh, specifically means the uh, Vishnu, in his function of maintaining the universe as uh, Karnadakshai Vishnu, the Paramatma or the super soul of all the universes, Garbhodakshai Vishnu, as the super soul of any who is manifest in each particular universe, uh, as the super soul of that universe, and Kshiradakshai Vishnu, the super soul located within the heart of every living being and within every atom. <clears throat> so these uh, three forms, they're also known as the Purusha avatars. These three Purushas. And um, in the Purusha Sukta, a primeval Vedic hymn which is uh, Echoed in Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, uh, we find the description of the Purusha. 
which corresponds to Garbo Dakshay Vishnu, means the primeval person of the universe without whom the universe doesn't function. So, Prakriti is there, but with, without the Purusha, Prakriti cannot be activated. So, Purusha means who activates Prakriti or who fills, fulfills Prakriti. Prakriti, in the example of a woman, means that a woman, the uh, function of her body is to uh, give birth to a child, to produce. But that is not possible unless she receives the seed from the Purusha, from a male. So Purusha uh, is a general term meaning person, but specifically Krishna is Uttama Purush, more commonly known as Purusha Uttama, Param Purush, Purusham Shashvatam Divyam. Now, the word Purusha also has, uh, can also be understood in various other ways, which uh, Sanskrit is such a language that it can be uh, analyzed in various ways. Purusanoti iti purushaha. One who uh, gives bliss in plenty, specifically the enjoyment of the bliss of himself to the liberated persons, he is known as the purusha. So the bestower of bliss means purusha, or purusha means bestower. Then, purisete iti purushaha, one who reclines. So there you get the purusha avatars. They're all lying on the, on the uh, snake body of Ananta. Pur, pura means also purva, previously. So, pura asit iti purusha. One who existed previously, which means he existed before anything else existed. These, that is also a meaning of Purusha. Pura Asit. And Pura also means to complete something, just like we have, what is it? Puriyati Iti Purana. So means the Purana means that which completes the Vedic knowledge. So Puriyati Iti Purusha. One who completes and fulfills everything else. Everything is incomplete without Krishna. Whatever may be there, however good it may seem, however powerful it may seem, however perfect it may seem, however attractive it may seem, it is incomplete and imperfect without Krishna. Srila Prabhupada gave that example of many zeros. Many zeros. You may, you may fill up pages and pages and pages and pages with zero, 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 zero. But it's all zero. If you put one in front, then it becomes a very big number. So Srila Prabhupada gave this example about modern civilization in the West, in, in America in particular, which is very developed, but Srila Prabhupada saw it all as one big zero. But, Srila Prabhupada would say, if you bring Krishna, Krishna is the one that will make all your achievements fulfilled and worthwhile. And without that, it will all simply be zero. So, who completes and fulfills everything? Nothing is complete Nothing is perfect without Krishna. However good it may seem. This is a very important point. Yeah, Puru Sanoti. Yeah. One who gives in plenty. He abundantly gives. Srila Prabhupada used to, or he, he quoted his father, that God has ten hands and you only have two. 
So if he wants to take away from you, how can you resist him? And if he wants to give you, how much can you take? He, he gives in abundance. So that example is also given of the, the woman walking in the forest with the bundle of firewood on her head and it dropped down and she was, oh, it all dropped down. I don't have any strength left to lift it back on my head. Govinda, Govinda, she cried in distress. And Govinda and said, came and said, yes, anything I can do for you? Govinda, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, appeared and she said, oh Govinda, put this firewood back on my head. She can, he can give anything, but we are fools and we, that we, we don't take his real gift. He can give in abundance, but because our conception is so limited, we ask him for uh, very insignificant things. At Tirupati, so many people go to Tirupati, help me pass my exam, help me get a better job, help me get a better wife, something like this. So asking for material benedictions. But Krishna himself shows what we should aspire for when he lies down on a leaf in the, in the water of devastation in his baby form, like any baby he sucks his toe. So this is the, what we should aspire for is the nectar of Krishna's lotus feet, which Krishna himself tastes. Very nice. All my devotees like it. It must be good. So Krishna licks his own toe and finds it's very nice. So Krishna can give in abundance. Why should we uh, desire anything else? Purusa noti iti purusha. One who gives in plenty. Puru means plenty. Sanoti means the giver. Puruni palani sanoti. Dadati iti purusha. One who gives plentiful results. So, what is that? Raso. It's written only here. Raso vai saha. Rasam hi evam. Ladvanandi. Nandi Bhavati. Yeah. He is rasa. He is pure bliss. And having attained him, one becomes completely blissful. So, uh, a meaning given by Shankaracharya, which we can accept. Uh, Navadwaram Purang Punyam Etai bhavai samanvitam vyapya sete maha mayas tasmat purusha utyate. So, uh, because he resides within the body of nine gates, that's navadvare pure dehi, it's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, the body of nine gates, the the, the Individual soul resides within the body of nine gates, which means the city of nine gates, which means the body. So, uh, such a that definition is given in Mahabharat, and uh, that also refers to the. So that can refer either to the jiva or to the supreme personality of Godhead, that he also resides. Puri sete, yeah. Same thing. Purisete iti purusha. Where are we going here? Purvam eva aham hi Yeah, that's the same thing. The one who existed before. Purvam aham iham asam iti purusha sya purusha bam. Navadvare pur. Yeah, so like this. These are some meanings of the term purusha. Hare Krishna. So that's all about, I'm going to say now, about Param Purusha, Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, Krishna. Like to say anything more? Ah, 
Adi Purusha, the original enjoyer. Yeah, yeah, we're we're all enjoyer. Yeah, that's an important point. We're all in this material world. We're all trying to be the enjoyer, but the actual enjoyer. We we take a form within 84 lakh possibilities within this material world, and we attempt, attempt to be the enjoyer. But the Adi Purusha, original and actual enjoyer who always remains in the position of the enjoyer, he doesn't become a non-enjoyer, or his enjoyment is not impeded, avyaya purusha, that is Vishnu. Yeah. Purusha means enjoyer. Yeah. Yeah. I studied that, didn't I? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.